Okay, so um, I'll collect my thoughts. <laughs> In today's session, we're going to emphasize a category of poses that are called forward fold. Um, we need some props as usual. So a chair, a bolster, a blanket, a block, and a yoga belt. Those are all going to be very useful. The main pose that we're aiming for uh, translates from the Sanskrit, from that long word, utita hasta padangustasana, to big toe pose. And in a way, it's an entirely misno misnamed pose in that sense, because well, it's not what we're aiming for. We're not aiming to do a stretch that has us hold our big toe up in the air. Um, what we're aiming to do, as usual, is to be centered in our breathing and to be um, progressing through the pose according to what our body allows us to do and what we, where we want to go and observe along the way and learn some things about ourselves. So having said that, let's begin with a lying down pose that we often do, which is Apanasana. So take a spot on the mat lying down. Get comfortable lying down with your legs bent and your feet on the floor near to your buttocks and arms just loose by your side. I heard a story from the American teacher, Leslie Kamenoff, about this position that we're in, this pose that we're about to do, that apanasana, in the way that it stimulates your digestive organs and the organs of elimination, is um, very therapeutic. When he went to India to study at the prestigious um, Mandiram, he um, <laughs> w observed many therapy classes and every single one of them started with this pose. So I think that's enough said about the benefits of it. So let's um, begin. Bring your knees towards your chest. Rest your hands onto the front of your knees. And at the moment, your arms are just passive. So take uh, a, a few breaths here. And the kind of breathing that we'll do is the framed breathing. So start your breath before you start the movement with an exhalation, bringing the thighs towards your ribs. Complete the breath after you finish the movement. And then inhaling and drawing the knees away from you. Completing the inhalation after you've completed the movement and that means we're slow going, and that's very good. Inhaling to exhaling, and that's the main um, emphasis of what you're doing. But along the way, you might check and see whether um, on the exhalations, you're able to draw the navel back with that depth of exhalation. And on the inhalation, allowing the chest to open up fully. It's very helpful to add another element here, which is as you draw the knees towards you, we'll do about 10 of these all together, move the sitting bones towards the floor. Exhale, thighs come in, completing that breath after you complete the movement, sitting bones are towards the floor and then beginning the next cycle. Shoulders relaxed, face relaxed. And as usual, because I'm talking, I've lost track of the count, but I think we're near to completing those cycles. So on the next inhalation, bring your feet to the floor, drop your arms out to the side. 
Let's do uh, a rotation for your hips. Take up your block, um, place it between your thighs on the narrow end, and maybe kind of in line with uh, um, the groins. And then gripping against the block between your legs, merely let your knees drop right. Just lifting that opposite hip a little bit, not very much, and then back to center and knees to the left. Allow your head to rotate. And that so you switch on the inner thigh muscles, just have a light grip on the block between your thighs. As always, the breath is the main thing. But with a little rotation through the back of the pelvis. Let's go one more round each side. And then finishing centered without the block. Step your feet right apart. We're in the warm-up phase of the session, and that's really important to do so we don't injure ourselves, and so we wake up the body gradually and get into the body. So knee, feet wide apart, wide as your mat, then drop your knees to the right side. And let's go straight away into extending the left arm overhead along, your, along the floor. Knees are to the right, left arm overhead. Left hip lifts up and big stretch laterally. And then fold that arm in. Let's go other side with that emphasis on the breath framing the movement. And three rounds here. A round is stretching each side. Where the stretch is strongest is the uh, inhalation that's opening up the side body. Take your own pace with this, but then when you finish, folding the arms back to the side and bringing the feet back in. I'd like to do um, the beginning of these leg stretches that are helpful in our goal pose, if we call it a goal pose, big toe pose. Um, take up your strap. Let's keep the left bit leg bent with your left foot on the floor and then bring your right knee towards you and s slip your yoga strap over the right foot and straighten that leg. Not completely. I'm holding the belt <coughs> with two hands. You hold along the belt near to the foot if you like, or even stretch the arms overhead, something like that. Then bend your right knee towards you. And with a little bit of resistance, push your right foot up towards the ceiling. That's what we're going to do, is alternately bend and straighten the leg in a slow fashion that allows us stay, to stay connected with the breath. What is that resistance like? Use your imagination as though you had a three kilo sandbag on the sole of your right foot and pushing up against that weight will help straighten the leg but also um, engage your front thigh muscles. And one more, pushing up. Keep that leg straight up, and let's move into a sideways movement. Take the belt into your right hand, and I've moved up very close to my right foot. Let your left knee drop to the left, so that bent leg dropping out to the left side, and then let's go out to the right side with the right leg. I'm going to just lift my head for a moment and see if I can line my knees up more in the same plane. That's going to keep my hip bones in the same line. And then from that um, side stretch, 
opening up through the groins and keeping the left side of your body anchored. We could here um, adopt that flexion and straightening and just kind of testing the waters. What does that feel like? And even with that idea of resistance too. So the pelvis stays still as you can as you're adopting in and out movements. Keep your right hand relaxed. It doesn't have to be a white knuckle grip. All right, last one out to the side like that. Bring up your left knee, left foot flat on the floor again. Switch your grip. I'm over in my left hand now and the legs crisscross the right leg across the left thigh and right leg out to the left. Good. You could squeeze a little bit with the inner thigh muscles. You can get quite a grippy feeling with them in this position. And it tones the pelvic floor too. Let's hold that a little while longer. The outer thigh stretch, right leg, but also right hip is still on the floor. Center the leg straight up again, left knee up towards the ceiling. And then when you pop the belt off, let's do a little bit. Sometimes this pose is affectionately known as through the whole pose. Simply bend your right knee out to the right side. Rest your right foot onto your left leg. Good. That um, turns my tilts my pelvis or torques my pelvis. So I'm just going to bring my hips into a line there again. And the weight's even on the back of the pelvis. And then you could take this to the next um, challenge, which is to lift the left foot off the floor and reach and hold your left leg. And you'll feel a deep crease at the top of the right thigh. Just working slowly into these movements, we're still in the warm-up stage. And then right foot onto the floor, pause. I'm right in the middle of my mat again, and now we'll work on the left leg. Left knee towards your chest, catch your left foot with your belt, and extend that leg. All right, feel the weight of the left thigh bone which is a very heavy bone, I guess the heaviest bone of the body, and it goes right back into its housing, the hip joint. Feel the weight of the back of the pelvis there. But then from that stability of the hip, bend and straighten the leg. And how does it go on this side? You filed away some sensations from the first side so that you can see how this is working. In my experience, the second side seems to learn a little bit from the first side. And then that's with resistance, alternately flexing, straightening with the breath. Let's go one more time and straight leg. Catch the belt into your left hand. Go left with your left leg, right with your right knee. The right leg is in that um, yoga pose like a half Baddha Konasana. And as you take that uh, left leg left without tipping, so the weight is still even on the back of the pelvis on the sacrum. And then let's see what that's like. Straightening and bending, bending and straightening. A light grip onto the belt. One more straight leg now, and then bring that right knee up, the leg back to center. 
Do the crossover. So scissoring the legs together. Grip the belt. Should be easier to hold with your right hand down to the belt now. And I'm very tempted to lift my left hip, but I'm going to keep that left thigh bone back into the joint and then squeeze with the inner thigh muscles. Draw the pelvic floor up and feel the um, contraction there too. And then I didn't do this on the first side, but what would it be like to alternately bend and straighten the leg here? How does that feel in the outer thigh muscles, in the um, gluteus minimus? All right, bring that leg back up to the center. And then for the last part of the warm up, bending the left knee out to the left side. Left foot onto your right thigh. Good. If your hips swung left, bring yourself back upright and center. And then see how we go. One hip can be so radically different than the other. Um, it certainly is my tighter hip on this side. As you bring your right thigh towards you, if it's within striking distance, hold the leg. And it's just fine to keep your foot on the floor here if you choose to. And then let it go. And right foot on the floor, left foot on the floor. Pause. Rest your hands across the navel center. And then collect yourself for a moment. Feel the results of your practice, the leg work, the hip work, and your breath. I'd like to do a movement, an exercise that loosens up the upper part of your, the back uh, chest, the dorsal thoracic. So without the belt, um, bring in a cushion or a blanket to rest your head on. I have this baby bolster as a strop, a, stra uh, a prop. That's what I'm going to use. You could use a three-fold blanket or um, what else? A block. <laughs> Blocks are not that comfortable. Okay, so take a position where you're sideline and that um, prop supports your head and your neck. And on my um, side. I'm going to bring my hips into a right angle with my thighs and my lower leg at a right angle to my upper legs. And having struck that position, my lower arm stretched out to the side and my upper arm resting on top of it. So we're all prepared to do a uh, rotation through the upper back, rolling onto your back a little bit as you turn towards the opposite side and take your arm behind you. So it's the first um, strong shoulder movement we've done. So take it easy, rolling back. Top hand rests on the bottom hand. I'm resting on my right side, so uh, <laughs> I didn't say which one you could be on. So I'll just say up, upper hand and lower hand and then Let's do a few rolls like that. And with the breath again. This isn't really a proper yoga asana or posture, but it's a really great way to open up the upper part of the back and get some movement there, especially if you're a little bit um, bowed in your upper back. So let's go one more time. This time I'm going to raise my ra uh, upper hand, upper arm towards the ceiling and over to the other side. That feels like a really generous and opening gesture and back. And then let's take the opposite side. Head and neck supported, 
left arm extended out along the floor. Um, that's your lower arm. Right ankles again, knees and hips. And right upper hand resting on the lower hand or my right hand resting on my left hand. And then rolling towards your back, turning your head and bringing the arm out to the side. I think of a um, a performance and an MC um, making a big gesture of welcoming, I don't know who, the audience, the performers. So feel that um, either as a rolling movement for your upper back and taking the top arm to the side or opening that arm out if you prefer big round circular movement. All right, and then let's let that be the last one. When you bring the arm back, let's come up into a kneeling position and without the props for the time being. And kneeling on all fours. And cat to cow position here is as valuable in any warm ups as the apanasana, I think. So feel at the moment that the back is straight from the back of your neck through all of your spine to your tailbone. And then let's work through the movement of the spine and allow the back to arch, the spine to arch up towards the ceiling, chin towards the chest. Exhale, inhale, lead with the breastbone and take your chest forward. And then let's move between those two movements. Animated by your breath. And once again, you can let the breath frame the movement. And let's go one more, arching the spine, making it a rainbow shape, and then exhaling, drawing the spine downwards. Let's move into child's pose. Bring your buttocks back towards your heels. Keep your arms straight forward, also called forward varasana, and tucking back. Now come forward once more. And we're preparing to come up through dog pose. Lift your knees, lift your hips. And then we're not staying there. Take a walk forward to Uttanasana. Bend your knees right over your ankles. Leave your arms loose by your side and roll up, head coming up last. All the way to standing and then did I mention? I don't think I did. We need a chair. So I'll give you a moment to get your flat seated chair. I'm going to take my chair right up near to the wall. And I've got it side on so I can face towards the high part of the chair with your blanket on the top of the, the high part of the chair on the top of the chair. So here we are, we're lined up facing the seat of the chair side on and ready for the uh, series of poses that we're moving into, Utita Hasta Padangasthasana. And um, if that height of the chair, reaching for the top of the chair with a leg stretch is too high for you, then by all means have a bolster there on the seat of the chair. And your heel on a bolster or even on the seat of the chair is just fine. I'm going for the high position. So let's say the right side is facing the wall and I'm going to be balancing on my left foot, 
Raise up your right leg and place the heel on your support. I've just been using the wall for balance. That's probably a good way to start. And <clears throat> once I've got the leg up, then you can keep both knees bent a little bit initially. We're still in the period of warming up the hamstrings. And get your balance there as much as you can. And then importantly, draw the left thigh bone into the back of the leg. So you're going to find that you're balancing, <laughs> hopefully you're balancing well, on the heel bone. And then drop that right hip a little bit. Bring your arms up overhead if you've got your balance there, or use the wall if you need balance. And then take a bow, a slight bow forward over the right leg. And then rest your hands onto your right thigh. If the right hip's elevated again, drop it. Inhale, bring your arms up again. And exhale, arms come down, folding that right leg gracefully, right foot to the floor, hopefully gracefully, and ready to start the other side. Just take a two, uh, a balance position on your two feet, and then bend the left leg in, raise the leg to where your support is. I've got um, an intention to have my heel bone on my support, but um, it's all right too to have the Achilles there. Just more, more comfortable for me to have the heel there. All right, and then from there, drop the left hip. Bring the right thigh back into the um, hamstrings, into the back of the leg. I always feel taller when I make that adjustment. And then let's raise the arms. And then from the forward folding position, finally bringing your hands down onto your leg. Drop that left hip again. Mine keeps creeping up. And then inhale, arms up. And exhale, leg and arms down. Good work there. Let's take the side on position. So if I turn my right side to the chair, um, to the seat of the chair, I'm going to bring my right leg up at um, not quite a right angle, actually not nearly a right angle, but my right leg out from my right side and support again. You can see that there's just always that tendency to hike up, hitch up the hip. So let's have the pelvis be level again by dropping that right hip, dropping the right buttock, the sitting bone. And then let's take right arm, right leg, palm upwards, the back of the hand resting on the right leg. You've come into a lovely lateral movement. And as you do that, extend out along the leg to whatever um, degree you can. So respectful always of any limits that we encounter, trying to discover what's there for us. And then last of all, bring the left arm straight up towards the ceiling and then tip over to the right side. Good. And then inhale and come up. Good. And then bending the knee and lowering right foot to the floor. All right, let's go second side for that sideways movement. And <coughs> the left leg comes up. Once you get your balance <laughs> and Let's go through those clue, cues. So dropping the left hip. Good. Left sitting bone is towards the floor. Even here, drawing the right thigh bone back into the back of the leg. Drop the left arm 
onto the left leg for support, palm upwards. You've already done part of a hip stretch. And then let's see whether we can enhance that feeling. Bring the right arm up overhead, relax your shoulders, and then stretch right arm to the left. And now there's a rib stretch, a shoulder blade stretch, elbow. Breathing, relaxed. Inhale and come up. And let's take that left foot to the floor too. And it might be a really kind and um, helpful thing to do just to use the chair for a dog pose stretch. So face towards the seat of the chair. Let's have um, you grip. We'll grip the sides of the chair. Um, wrap your fingers around and then step back and enjoy a stretch for your spine. Take a couple of breaths there on the exhalation, lengthening. On the inhalation, lifting the breastbone and um, bringing it slightly forward. Good. Rise up on the balls of your feet. Lift your heels high. And even more, lift from the back of your knees to your buttock bones. And get that last little bit of hamstring stretch at the top back thigh. Good. If you can, keep your hips high. Keep the sitting bones high. And slowly lower your heels. And then take a walk in and inhale and come up. We have a little bit more work to do with uh, Utita Hasta Padangustasana, big toe pose. But before we do that, let's um, do a couple of standing poses. And one in particular um, emphasis is Prasarita Padatanasana, the wide leg forward fold. I'm going to use my block here initially. So take up a block, take a wide position, just step right out, and place your block in front of you, just on the um, carpet or the floor in front of you. Good. And then once you're upright, land in your feet. Feel your feet as a footprint, circumferentially, the uh, whole outline of your feet. And as you do that, then the leg muscles engage, I think, as well. Then with your hands onto your hips, take a forward fold position. And we're doing that um, deepening the crease at the front of the um, hips and the top of your thighs. And then you're in a good position to reach right out and rest your hands onto the top of the brick. Um, when you've done that, let's have the arms uh, at a reach. So I'm going to wriggle the block a little further forward. And the reach isn't just with my arms, it's with the top chest. So feel the breastplate forward, the collarbones forward. And as I do that, there's much more stretch through the backs of my thighs as my hips have come forward too. All right, let's follow what we did in the floor work with another movement for the thoracic spine. Bring that block right in, or you may not need to um, use it. Um, if you are, then rest your left hand onto the top of the block. Bring your right hand down to your right hip. Turn your chest towards the right side. And notice what happens with your left leg. So bring awareness into your footprint, left footprint again. Let Engage the left thigh, leg as much as the right leg. And then from there, bring your right shoulder back, back. bring your right elbow back. Good. 
and then let's swap arms and turning to the left and emphasizing right footprint again feel that footing and shoulder comes back looking left all right let's go to the right again um, and this time I will bring my hand down onto the floor, left hand directly underneath my sternum. And then as you've turned as much as you can to the right side, release your right hand if you're ready to do a arm and shoulder stretch and take that arm overhead or uh, up to the ceiling. Good, and then swap, and right hand is the supporting hand. Left hand starts on the waist, and then as you turn from your right shoulder, right shoulder blade, then you might want to release your left arm, take the left arm up. It's fine to keep your hand onto your hip too. Good, let's go back to centered position and both hands down, either onto your block or onto your um, fingertips. Fingertips feel like your uh, center of your palms is like a suction, and it's drawing all the way up through your wrists and your elbows through your upper arms to the center chest. And then finally, let's do the forward fold. And so from the hip crease coming to release the head down, to release the chest down. And then there's a, still that rebounding of energy through your feet, ankles, the backs of your legs. Good. And then let's bring hands forward in anticipation of coming up, lift your chest again, and then walk your feet in close to center, bend your knees, and inhale and come up. Take a, a kneeling position. You may wanna double fold your mat to do this. Um, so I have two mats, one on top of the other, so my knees are quite protected. <laughs> also on a carpet with an underlay, so it's quite comfortable. So I'm in a kneeling up position. I'm gonna take my right leg out to the right side. And where I've placed it, my right heel's in line with my left knee. Good. So I've done this kind of strange movement, not an everyday movement. Right leg out to the right. And then I'm going to bring my hands in front of me and sit my buttock, my left buttock back towards my left heel. So it's a really strong knee movement, but it's also forward folding. So that hip crease is deep on the left leg again. Good. Bring your chest forward and walk your hands back in. Come all the way up so you're up kneeling again. Fold the right leg in. Bring the left leg out to the left side. And check your alignment, left heel, right knee. And then bring your hands forward and slowly lower left buttock, sorry, right buttock towards the right heel. And that deep crease at the front of the hip. Good, bring your chest forward and folding the left leg in, inhale and come up. And let's do one more round and that was a um, movement that fits in with Parigasana, the gate pose, and extend the right leg out to the right. 
Then on this round, let's take your block again. Hopefully it's still right there. And place it on the outside of your left knee on the high end. Do a lean out towards that left side. Place your left hand onto the top of the block. You're already in a very nice lateral movement. And let's enhance that feeling as we've been doing by raising the right arm up. Bring it overhead. I feel like I've warmed up enough, so I'm going to lower that block so it's on its mid-range and create a big lean out and stretch of the lateral body. Good looking up. All right, one movement comes up, one breath brings you up. Fold the right leg in and place your block, left leg out to the left side, lean to the right and take support from the block. You can have your hand all the way to the floor. My arms are shorter, so I like to have that extra support. And you've already done a good opening for that left side. Then increase that by bringing the left arm up and overhead. Feel into the dorsal thoracic where you did that lovely work in the beginning on the floor. And then bring the upper part of your back into a little bit of a back bend. Lovely. And then folding that arm in and you're back to up kneeling. And let's take um, forward Varasana. Bring your buttocks back towards your heels. Extend the arms out. Always a good idea to consolidate after you've done a series of poses or sometimes even just a single pose. Allow your shoulders to relax here, maybe just rest your forearms finally. Feel your breath in your abdomen, your diaphragm as it simply comes and goes. All right, and then unravel and come up and all the way to standing and take up your yoga strap. I remember being a beginning teacher. Yes, I can remember back that far. And um, traveling around to different locations. It's what you do when you're a beginning teacher. And um, not necessarily having all the lovely props that I have in the studio, but you could always easily transport belts. It's amazing what you can do with belts. So let's take um, a position near to the wall. I'm going to have my backside to the wall because what we're about to do is a balancing exercise. So it's right there. Um, not completely at the wall. My heels are just a couple of centimeters away from the wall. So the first thing that we're going to do is balance on the left leg and get um, solid balance on that side. Lift your right heel, press your um, left foot into the floor, and slowly raise your right leg towards your chest. The next step will be made easier the higher you lift that knee towards you. So a deep fold at the top of the uh, right hip, and then catch hold of your foot with the belt. I think you know what's next, what's coming. Once you caught the um, the foot, the, you might raise your knee a little bit higher and then see how you go to extend the right leg out in front of you. Keep the um, standing leg a little, um, the back of the knee soft so you're not hyperextending that knee. You're very reliant on it at this point. And then 
with the help of the belt, you can raise the leg a little bit higher perhaps, but unhitch the right hip, drop the right hip. All right, and then folding that leg in, and let's swap from two feet on the ground, feel them both um, supportive, and then take the weight onto your right foot. Bear the weight through your right leg, and then raise your knee high before you pop the belt onto your left foot. We're going to do another round of this. So just follow the uh, early clues here, um, verbal clues, I should say, and drop the left hip. That's what I mean by unhitching it. Good. Feel the um, strength through the right leg without overextending the knee. All right. Well done. And then let's fold that leg in. And in the second round, we're going to work more with the outer hip muscles, the gluteus minimus muscles. So let's make a good beginning there. Stand on your two feet, strong support from your left leg. Even as you start to raise your right knee this time, then compress your hips. So feel the hips from the outer hips to the inner hips, very compact, very narrow. Then take up the uh, strap again. And readily extending the leg without losing that adjustment that you made, that self-adjustment, that supportive um, feeling of the hips. And notice again, I've gone into really gripping the belt. So see if you can have hands a little bit softer and the um, leg muscles working strongly. All right, Let, coming to the last side and released. And setting ourselves up very well, outer hips again, Feel them switch on, balance your weight onto your right foot, and then take up your left leg. All right, and as you're ready, when that leg is raised, you might find that your body is willing to be a little less reliant on the wall. Standing leg, right thigh bone into the back of the leg. And hips strong, the outer hip strong. Drop the left hip. All right, and then let's let that go. There's one more part to this series. So we're going to divest ourselves of the belt. <clears throat> got the wall for support if needed to we if we we need to use it and then freestanding this time so left leg does the work hip strong from the outer to the inner raise up your right knee remember bring it high so that you can extend it out and then extend the right leg. If you feel like you're completely balanced there, you might be willing to bring the arms up, which, as we know, changes the center of gravity. So we've still got the wall there, but we're very reliant on the strength of that standing leg. And then lowering arms and leg in the same movement. Ah. And other side. Strong right leg, firm hips, moving slowly, 
not to upset the balance, but then when your leg is extended, see if it's there for you to bring up your arms. Good, outer hip strong. And then lowering down. And it probably would serve us well just to give the quadriceps a little bit of a pat. Two hands or one hand on each one. A little indulgence there for those hardworking muscles. Inner thighs. Well done. And then have a seat. I'm going to sit on my small bolster. You might want um, a three-fold blanket for this part and extend the legs out. So sometimes um, I might suggest props or um, some ideas that don't feel completely appropriate for your body. So I just noticed that that bolster that I was sitting on felt a little bit high. So I'm going to come down a peg and just sit on a folded blanket. So really it's important um, as students that you work out what works for your own anatomy as I'm doing. All right, and legs straight out. When your legs are straight out like this, you're in Dandasana, that most basic of poses. And keep your um, feeling of lift and buoyancy. Bring your hands back behind you and then use your arms as an extension of your spine to help lift up. And the chest and the front of your neck and your chin's up a little bit and your gaze is up. Throw your shoulders back, squeeze your back muscles a little bit, and then release. Let's see, at the moment I'm uh, probably towards my tailbone more than the front of my pelvi uh, pubic bone. So I'm gonna bend my legs and reach under and draw the flesh of my buttocks out from the sitting bones. I can feel them exposed and I can sit on them a little bit better. And then um, extending the legs once more, unless you pitch back. You can, uh, otherwise you can keep your legs bent. Let's go into um, Janushirsasana. So let's say left leg out to the left and bending your right leg in. And I've struck a wide leg position for um, Janushirsasana. So it's more or less like the splits. And then this is a version of the pose and it gives us a lateral movement and forward um, stretch at the same time. So turn a little bit towards your straight leg and reach your right arm up towards the ceiling. So a long right arm connected with the long right side of your body. And then cast that arm towards your um, left leg and place it along your leg. Wherever you land is going to be just right. Your left hand, now lift your left palm and bring your left hand and arm underneath your right arm and forward. And as you do that, you've done into a rotation, a lateral movement, and a, a lateral bend at the same time. That's a lot going on. See if you can extend that underarm, which is the left arm at the moment, a little more forward. And then looking that direction to the right, Feel the lengthening from the two sides of your body this time. I'm very close to holding my ankle now or the side of my foot. Might do that. Might bring you down a little bit lower and it's fine to be lifted up a little bit more too. All right, and now the unraveling and coming up 
and upright. Good. And just feel the difference that made on that right side of your body. Let's see if we can even things up and folding left leg in, right leg out. Splits like way out to the right side. With a slight rotation, turn towards your straight leg. Good. And then I've got my right hand behind me for support. And then bringing your left arm up. Good. And then casting that arm out as far as you can along the right leg, even the outer leg. Good. And once you catch your hand there, you can turn a little bit more, and you might turn and engage your belly muscles to do that. Slip your right hand out, bring it underneath the left arm, and forward. And you know now, of course, it's not just your arm that's coming forward, but your whole shoulder. If I now adjust for my body, and bring my hand up a little bit, I've got more space to bring the arm and the shoulder forward. Maybe the intention to look underneath that arm and forward. And always wind back the effort if you feel like in any way you're over, overdoing. And then let's unwind and coming up. And finally, we'll take Janushirsasana as a, as the proper pose, if we can say that. And left leg straight and right leg bent. By all means, use um, a belt to hold your foot if you're not reaching easily, and, or without the belt, holding along the leg, um, ankle, or foot. But initially, let's pull back and lift up. My left leg straight, my right foot a little bit out from my left thigh, and that right leg if it needs support, support the outside of the knee. And then relax the right quadricep, the right groin. Then turning from right to left and deepening the hip fold, that forward fold at the top of the left hip to come into the forward bend. And then hold wherever you're able to wherever your body will allow at the moment, wherever you wish. Let's see if we can create a sense of lightness in the center chest by lifting up. Feel that movement that comes from the inside, like you've um, got a helium balloon there. And then <coughs> flex your elbows. Instead of bending so much from the upper back, Let's see if we can lengthen the side body that we've opened up so well in so many poses by bending the elbows out to the side and leading um, as much with the arms, the outer shoulder blades, as with the spine. All right, and then let's all come all the way up and swap legs. Not rushing and setting up well. The right leg is straight, the left foot a little out from the right thigh. And then taking time, paying attention. Once we're in the pose, we don't do that necessarily so well, that the left groin is relaxed, that the quadricep is softening. And then turning back towards the straight leg. Good. And in the upright position initially, drawing the spine up. Deep, deepen the fold at the top of the right thigh. And then allow yourself to come forward from that hip crease. The further forward you come, the more um, work there is on releasing the left leg left groin, left thigh, 
and then take up where you can a handhold onto the belt, onto the foot, and then bend the elbows. Just feel what a difference it makes if the elbows are out and also a little bit lifted in connecting with your upper part of your back and of course your spine that way. And lengthening and turning. And part of your momentum is coming from the side body stretch, from the sides of your rib cage, sides of your waist. Creating lightness in the center chest. Inhale and come up. Extend the left leg with the right. And I think we must do a twist here to counterpose everything else that we've been doing. Keep your left leg straight. Bend your right leg. Place your right foot on the outside of your left knee. And then hug in your um, knee towards your chest. And so your arms are folded around the kneecap. Lift up. Allow the left hand, the flat of the left hand against the right knee to draw the right knee closer to you. And then cast your right arm behind you and properly sit up again. That sounds so formal, um, meaning just elongate your spine. Good. With all the work that we've done on alignment and playing very careful attention to the body position, press the right foot down. Really ground that right foot. And then also notice if you've lifted off of your right buttock and bring it back down to the mat. Turn. Can you hug in that knee a little bit? I've got the crook of my elbow around my knee. And you've done a nice job there in stretching out those glute muscles again, the glute medius, minius. And then release and stretch right leg. Draw that left knee in towards you. Place it on the outside of your right thigh. Good. And sitting up properly. <laughs> I don't know where I got that word. Um, just comfortably upright, not uptight, but upright. And then the flat of your right palm against the outside of your knee, that left hand right behind, it comes almost around to the right buttock side. And then turning. I'm going to take a deeper hold of that knee with the crook of my elbow. Lovely. And then extending right, uh, left leg out with the right. You're back in Dandasana. Um, give your legs a shake out. They've served you well. And now we're going to give them a rest in Viparita Karani, legs up the wall pose. Take all the props that you need for making yourself comfortable in that reclining position at the wall. And I'll use my small bolster for this again. I think it's very much the case that when we come to um, the last part of a yoga session, whether we're doing a class or we're doing our own practice, that the emphasis can be clearly seen to be self-care. So you need to take your time to do that. We don't want to rush to relax. So, of course, uh, Viparita Karani can be done 
with um, your buttocks right against the wall. You don't necessarily have to have a bolster. But for me, that is maximizing my comfort and also giving a little bit more of the sense of an inversion. So there you've arrived at the um, legs up the wall position. Are your buttocks as near to the wall as you can get them? You can elbow walk in or shoulder walk in closer to the wall possibly. And then once you've done that, then draw your t-shirt or your shirt down away from the, um, the throat area so that you're feeling free in the upper part of your chest. And then find the place at this moment in time where your arms um, are going to be the most comfortable. Try on a couple of possibilities. One is resting your hands across your navel or just onto the sides of your rib cage, the palms lightly on the ribs. Or the arms just as you would have them for Shavasana. It creates a little bit more um, Emphasis on the heart area. If you bring your arms overhead, one palm resting on the other on the floor. Or your arms even in goal post position. And that process of finding your own favorite place, placement, is very much the process of tuning in. And going beginning of your inward journey. Quietening down. And pos pacifying the body and the mind. We've been quiet for a few minutes, and that's a very good and necessary thing to come to a quiet place within. And without having to do anything at all, still for a few moments, we can't help but anticipate being active once more shortly. We know that that's coming. So to whatever degree you can, stay relaxed, even as you exit from this pose, just bending your legs a little bit, pushing back from the wall so you've got some space. And 
can, in that bent leg position, staying for several more breaths. And very slowly coming to the sit to complete our session. Once seated, then possibly um, closing your eyes again and touching into that inner space, which is quiet and calm and spacious. With your hands drawn together in prayer position, lift your elbows a little bit and lift the center chest really have a sense of elevating the heart. Feel the um, goodness of your own heart, your own generosity. And let's send that out to everyone, all creatures, all sentient beings. Namaste. Thank you.